Good evening all. Tonight we're going to discuss KISS Ultra FC FC, which stands for Feder Commander Flight Controller. And I found out about this a couple of months ago and I've been really excited about it ever since. And this is a flight controller and it's also designed a little PDB should you be using separate ESCs. So, this, as I said, has been kicking around everywhere recently. And what we have here is essentially a new variety of KISS with a lot of fancy features which should make it really attractive for more people. And if you look at the board, it looks very similar to the existing KISS flight controller there. But when you put them side by side, there's a big difference. So anyway, just to give a bit of an intro introduction, Alexander Fedorov, who has created this, is a long time KISS amateur developer, I suppose you would call him. Um, a lot of his coding has been integrated into full KISS release and also into the FETEC um, flight controller as well. So he's the guy who gave us full um, DJI OSD within KISS. He's the guy who gave us Return to Home. And if you're a Patreon supporter, Return to Home on Fail, fail Safe. Um, so this is a, a guy with a lot of a, a pedigree and a background. And the reason why I've got this is I've been a long term Patreon subscriber of uh, Fedorov ever since I basically started flying um, KISS and more in particular the DJI FPV system because flying DJI with KISS took away a lot of the faff which we had in previous generations, namely the fact that KISS boards never have a built-in OSD, so you end up having to use, you know, initially Wolf PDBs, um, which you could use GPS on, and then later we had Impulse, um, Apex, OSD and regulator boards. And all of these are a bit of a faff if you're an analog pilot. So, Fedorov has released his own flight controller and it has a H7 chip and built-in OSD running off that chip with more stuff than you can shake a stick at. We've got seven serial ports and a barometer and he's improved the GPS return to home with that barometer support. And as I just touched on, the major selling point here is we've got a full OSD, but also this can potentially do BL Heli pass through. And I, as you can see, have two of them. And the reason why I have two of them is this was the one that I got last week as per um, quite a few people who were long term Patreon supporters. But as Sod's Law happens and his reviewers curse, this one, while working perfectly in every way, has a faulty gyro. And as things stand, I'm the only person so far who's had a faulty one. So it's just Sod's Law. I contacted um, Alex Sunday night at quarter to 11 uh, just to let him know that um, I had a faulty one. I woke up Monday morning, which is a bank holiday in the UK, um, to him messaging me, um, basically saying, you know, so sorry, I can't believe that's happened. I've checked loads of others and I can't find a fault, blah, 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 blah. And today, less than 24 hours later, this guy rocked up. So my plan is Alex is going to fix this guy and I'm going to use it for testing of different things in the future. So before we move on to the OSD and all the things that it can do, one of the big things that has been touted is that this guy can run BL Heli 32 or BL Heli ESCs straight out of the box. And as this stands today, that's not actually 
um, the case or in all cases. BL Heli 32 has a million different variations and on this particular ESC which is a T-Malta F55 Pro 2 BL, BL Heli pass-through does not work and I believe that's the same on a number of ESCs. However, this is a beta product right now. It's just been sent out to a small number of people and for about five seconds you could buy it on the Flyduino website and uh, the Impulse RC one. Um, Alex is obviously going to improve the support for BL Heli ESCs and he's ordered a bunch of different ESCs to test and I've also said that I'll test out on a number of different ESCs that I've got kicking around and sending the logs. So it'll be sorted. As things stand at the moment, apparently it works perfectly on hobby wing ESCs. I don't know about the other ones, but if you know anything about Alexander, you'll know that it won't take him too long to fix it because um, he's a demon when it comes to getting stuff done. Um, he sorted out the DJI um, in very little time and it was the same with GPS and they all work perfectly. So if, you, if you're itching to buy one of these right now, don't be surprised if you find out it doesn't work with your BL Heli ESC, um, simply because until more and more people start buying and testing with different things, it's very hard for one guy to you know, test a million different varieties to make sure they all work. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a work in progress, which I think is absolutely fine. The OSD, on the other hand, works absolutely perfectly and is a wonderful thing. Even if you're using DJI, which I probably will do in the future, the ability to look and use the OSD within the configurator and set everything up um, is really a game changer. And the idea behind this is it will run and plug perfectly into existing KISS ESCs and uh, both the 4-in-1 ESC and the single ESC. It will also work with the FETEC ESC, although you'll have to repin the um, connector that comes with the FETEC ESC, um, otherwise you'll fry it. So... This has really come about from a number of things. One, to fix the bugbears that um, he felt were present within the existing KISS setup. But two, to address the issue, which seems to be floating around a lot, of FETEC unreliability. Namely, flight controllers that are dead on arrival or flight controllers that have issues with D-Shot 2400. And my thumbnail is a bit of a dig um, at Steele and his sort of pettiness towards Fedorov and the fact that he hasn't given him any credit even though he's flying his court cold day in, day out. Um, so this is really a third branch. I suppose you could look at uh, the KISS Ultra um, as a separate fork, almost like um, EMU flight is possibly to beta flight and obviously FETEC. Um, tend to do their their own thing, but the, there isn't any real development going on on FETEC. The dust, you know, they've added new um, ESCs and new flight controllers, but they haven't really done anything to the initial code. All of those updates have really come via um, Alexander. So if we move on to the OSD, so this is the GUI which you can download from GitHub. Um, and they do a Windows version and also a Chrome version. Not sure if it's uh, Mac as well. But you can see here everything is pretty much familiar um, as per the normal KISS setup. There's a few little changes um, in a nod towards that Betaflight, um, or should I say BL Heli pass through. And you've got Betaflight ESC settings here. And the rest of it, for a few tweaks, is relatively similar to what we've seen before. It gets really interesting when you go on to the OSD and even though I'm only plugged in via 5 volt USB now this is essentially um, everything that I need to set up. So if I turn on my 
TX. Welcome to Tango 2. You'll see on the OSD straight away we've got obviously the voltage and the fact that I've got 100% LQ at the moment. And if I hold your left and go into the OSD, you'll see it comes up with a lot of different options. And there's a ton of stuff within this. So if we go into flight controller setup, you've got the usual P PIDs, RC rates, etc., TPI. But we've also got a lot more things that we can fiddle with. And certainly if you're an analog pilot, you're going to have access to all these. Not if you're a DJI pilot, although of course you can go into the GUI like I'm doing and do it like that. Obviously you've got all the usual stuff. You can set your LiPo voltage, fail safe seconds, and the list of things goes on. This flight controller will support eight motors. So you can run unusual layouts if you wish to do so and as you can see here you can change your serial ports from within the OSD and there's seven of them. The thing that I love is instead of using that silly drop down box where you choose what orientation your ESC is in we can simply go into here and change the motor outputs so when I built my particular quad you can see it goes one, two, four, three, and that's just because motors three and four were the wrong way around. So I just basically changed them within here. And it's super easy to do. You, obviously you can, you can uh, sort all your uh, GPS logos, DJI layout, etc., etc. The list is pretty much end endless. If we go into ultra setup, then you can choose your sync level. And that's if you're using an analog camera and you sync. If I just plug in a battery, bear with me one second. So you can change your sync level directly. But if I go back and go to hardware tests, you can basically set up your video sync to make sure you're not getting a flickering OSD. So what it's here doing now is testing the settings. And then it will give you a little graph as to where your sync level, I suppose is the term, sits. And you can see in this particular case, the sync is between 670 and 882.1. So if I go back into that ultra setup, you can see that I've set mine at 811. Obviously call sign, etc., and all the bits and bobs, you can set up yourself. And if we go into the OSD editor, these are all the things that you can add to your screen. One thing just to mention actually before I forget is that um, telemetry with BL Heli will not work correctly at present unless you've got a very old ESC that has individual shunts on it. Um, KISS will only do digital telemetry and right now there's issues within BL Heli rather than KISS that stop it from doing that and hopefully that's something that will be fixed in an up and coming release. Um, so all you'll get is battery voltage and an estimation. Um, obviously you can set your latitude, longitude. The amount of stuff that you can put on here is ridiculous. And I notice you can also use link quality like I've got here, but you can also have RS, RSSI displayed as well. And even CPU temps, VTX power, etc. And I'm gonna turn my quad off now because it's gonna start overheating so if I just go back in again and again you can change all the parameters and move these around on the screen etc etc to your heart's content camera control we've got kiss ASC setup you can obviously 
change everything around directions etc can't change motor directions from with BL heli from within the OSD that I found although maybe this works I don't know I haven't tested that but you can certainly change uh, your motor direction within the actual GUI itself TBS crossfire obviously I'm using the Tango 2 and you can just load up all the parameters etc that you're using as you can see I'm running 500 milliwatts 868 because I'm in the UK and again if we go into hardware tests you can see there's my throttle pitch box switches etc etc GPS test well obviously I can't do that because I'm not I haven't got GPS on this particular quad and then we've got motor test where you can basically just select individual motors and test that they're all working correctly and spin them up individually so essentially you've got everything you can possibly think of all built and all real time within here and as i said this is exactly what you're going to see on your um, analog goggle feed rather than it being a representation so absolute props to Mr. Federoff for that because it's an absolute game changer with KISS because one of the bugbears that everybody's had with it is the fact that you've never had an integrated OS, uh, OSD. You've always had to use fiddly boards and the OSDs were never as full featured as um, beta flights and have now of course you've got it. So now that the basics are out of the way the thing to sort of the question really to ask is why would you purchase this over the FETEC flight controller or indeed KISS V2? Well, over the FETEC flight controller, I would say, as I've said previously, the KISS board, even the original one, and this is exactly the same, is a much nicer layout. But the number one reason why you would choose this is simply because of the OSD. Even if you're a DJI pilot, um, as I often am, the ability to quickly change everything around within that OSD is a lot easier than faffing around with the GUI and whether or not we will see additional DJI features in the future I don't know because obviously you're limited with what you can do with DJI. The second reason is you're not a Patreon supporter but you want return to home on failsafe which of course you will get out of the box with this. With the normal KISS and FETIC releases, you will only get return to home on the activation of a switch rather than on a failsafe, which of course is when you want it. Um, so beyond the OSD and its ability to do lots of different things and the fact that that OSD is real time if you're an analog pilot, one of the big reasons why you'll support this is because it's the start of something new. KISS has been pretty stagnant for years now. The original KISS flight controller was pretty much game-changing with its F7 processor, direct voltage, turtle mode. All of those things came from um, KISS and possibly Flight 1. But with this, you've got the best of Flight 1's clever OSD and setup. You've got the ability in future updates to seamlessly run BL Heli pass through, which means that you don't have to rely on potentially volatile FETEC ESCs. And that's one of the big reasons I think this is all being developed because FETEC has got a bit of a bad reputation at the moment for relatively poor customer service. Certainly if you buy it from anybody other than directly from them, you won't get very far. And two, a lot of pilots are basically suffering dead flight controllers or um, ESCs and ESC fires, FETs on ESCs, melting, D-shot issues. Personally speaking, I haven't had those on the ESC since the original ones that I complained about. My quads have been crashed and bashed a million times and my FETEC ESCs are still going strong. I have had a couple of dead on arrival flight controllers, but that can happen to the best of them as per 
I discussed earlier on today. But it's just a really simple, elegant solution. And because Alexander has always been a hobbyist who basically loves Kiss and tinkering with Kiss, supporting him feels like a really natural thing. You know, Alexander doesn't know me or whether I'm an honest bloke or anything about me, but the original flight control hour I was sent, I messaged him to say, has it been sent? And he sent me the link. And I hadn't even paid for it at that point. The price for the one that I got was 50 euros, and I had to pay 12 euros shipping to the UK. If you're in Europe, I think it's 60 euros, which is an introductionary price, because of course, right now, the cost of electronics is huge. If you're somebody who runs the KISS 4-in-1 ESC or the KISS single ESCs, well, this guy will blend seamlessly with it. But I suspect its bigger target audience is beta flight pilots who've maybe wanted to try KISS but have been put off by the amount of jiggery pokery you had to go through to get simple things and um, with the work he's done in the past and the clever things that we've got within this board that day no longer exists and if you're having trouble with fetic ESCs or even kiss ESCs for that matter you can now or should I say uh, in the not too distant future use whatever your favorite BL Heli S or BL Heli 32 ESC um, you prefer. What we'll discuss in an up and coming video um, is how this guy running BL Heli 32 feels in comparison to, in my case, a full Fetux, a Fetec setup because there's a little bit of magic within KISS ESCs and Fetec ESCs and I wonder whether I'll feel that as somebody who's run predominantly FETEC for a good couple of years now. Um, I have used BL Heli ESCs and KISS in the past and done uh, build videos on it. That's it. This is my SX218 which is running iFlight Slim ESCs, F4 processors and a KISS board. And if you want to run D-Shot 200, 2400 on KISS, you will need an ESC with an F3 or an F4 processor. I'm not sure about the newer L4s. Anything less than that and you'll have to run D-Shot 1200 or D-Shot 600. But whether or not you'll be able to tell the difference is debatable. In terms of ESCs that I know of that basically allow, uh, that basically have F3, or F4 processors. You've got the T motor ones, which I mentioned. You've got iFlight's Slim series. You have um, Acon's RD32. Not sure if there are any other ones. Uh, you've got the Airbots Furling and the Teco 32, which are both the same board, and the more recent Teco F4 Metal which is an updated version on that. There are also Speedex LS40s, which are single ESCs, which again have an F4 processor. So there are a number of ones out there. Um, if, like me, your choice was based on what had been out for quite a long while and wasn't ridiculously expensive, then uh, your choices will be more limited. And as I said, probably the, one of the best ESCs I've come across or the hobby wing ones. This one's pretty ancient and still going strong, but alas, they don't have that F3 or F4 processor. So you're only gonna get D-Shot 600 or D-Shot 1200. So yeah, long and the short of this is long may it continue. As I said, there's only a few out there at the moment, or should I say a few, probably a hundred or maybe 200. Um, and there are obviously gonna be bugs and issues along the way but not with the way it flies and not with the OSD itself, which in my testing seems bulletproof. 
those bugs will be around BL Heli support. Although, as I've said, given the support and service that I've had, and now how helpful the, the Discord group is, it's something I'm really happy to support. And I will be making further purchases in the future because, quite simply, if I want to run KISS, why would I run a FETEC flight controller or KISS V2 when I can get this guy with its better processor, nice simple layout, tons of serial ports or UARTs if you prefer, full GPS support, and as I said, that fancy OSD. Bit of a no-brainer for me. So yeah, shout out to Alexander Fedorov. I know there's a lot of people out there looking for this. Um, thank you very much for getting this overnight to me. Um, just shows that he's really sort of dedicated to making this work. And I know I, he's spent a lot of money um, putting all this together. So I wish him the best of luck. <clears throat> Mine will go in a future build. Um, I'm hoping that um, Blood's from Halo RC is going to send me a new frame, which should be up my street, a more sort of heavy freestyle frame. Um, and my plan right now is to put this guy in there and do some further testing. And as I said, moving forward, as time permits, I'll feed as much data as I can to uh, Alexander to try and help him move this forward. So yeah, really chuffed with it. It's really, really clever, bit of an all-in-one solution few things that I wish were there. Current, current sensing will be a bugbear for some people, but that's outside of KISS. That's a BL Heli um, issue, which will work its way out, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but other than that, fantastic product and really exciting one. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.